classic Vietnamese pho. Oh, just the most comforting bowl of noodle soup you could possibly imagine. And we are gonna go through this one step by step to get the ultimate Vietnamese beef pho. The most amazing bowls of fur I've ever had always have the most brilliant, beautiful, crystal clear, beefy, fragrant, just amazing broth. It's all about the broth. <laughs> uh, so making that broth at home and getting it really super, super, super charged with a whole lot of flavor does take a little bit of effort. It's not difficult, a little bit of effort, a little bit of time, uh, but we're gonna go through it step by step and you guys are gonna have the most amazing bowl of fur at the end. All right, let's get on to the beef first of all. So you want to head to your supermarket or your butcher and it'll depend on where you are and what you can get a hold of. But basically, we want some beef bones. Uh, now, I like to go with some bones with a bit of meat on them. So I'm using some short ribs here and I'm also using some oxtail. Now, oxtail is the important one here because the oxtail also has some really good like gelatinous stuff inside those bony bits. Uh, so if you can't get oxtail, try and get beef knuckle. It's kind of the knuckly joint parts of the beef uh, bones that have the gelatin. So you want to mix bones, gelatin, meat, and you should be good to go. All right, so I'm gonna get all of that into my pot. The biggest pot you've got at home would be great. I'm gonna do about five liters of water here. So mine's about a six liter stock pot. And now in order to get that really beautiful crystal clear color, what we need to do is kind of blanch these bones first and get rid of a whole lot of gunk that's gonna come out of them first up. So pour the water in just so that they're covered and then bring this up to a boil and just Cook it for like two or three minutes or until you see a whole bunch of gross stuff on the top. <laughs> You'll know, trust me. All right, while that's happening, we're gonna char some vegetables. So yes, even the vegetables get the special treatment for this one. Now, I really wanna char the outside of these vegetables. So I'm gonna use an open gas flame here. If you've got a gas stove top, that's great. If you've got a gas barbecue, you could do that outside. Otherwise, just roast these in the oven until they're really nice and black. First up, I want an onion, whole onion, pop it on the flame, and then a whole piece of ginger as well. And what we're looking for here is kind of really burning the outside of these, and then the inside will be nice and sweet and soft. Ooh, that is noisy. <laughs> now just keep rotating both of these. Kind of turn the heat down to about medium. I don't want to set the fire alarm off, uh, but I do want, as I said, to get a really nice char on the outside here. It's gonna take like 10, 15 minutes, so be a little patient. Okay, so I really did mean burn the outside of those vegetables. You can see how charry, charry they are. So just take the onion off first, and then what you want to do is actually take off most of that burnt stuff. So just kind of get your knife in here and just peel that off. And then give that a little bit of a rinse as well. All right, now just slice the onion up. Now, same thing for the ginger. So just take off that burnt skin. You can tell that ginger is really nice and soft inside. So this is going to take away kind of that harsh onion or harsh heat from the ginger so that our broth ends up being infused with a really sweet onion flavor and a sweet ginger flavor. There is method to the madness, don't worry. Okay, just wash that ginger off as well. And then just give that a slice. And then what I like to do here to get even more flavor out of my ginger is just to kind of break it down with a pestle or a rolling pin. All right, so I did warn you about the horror show that was going to be at uh, the top of that liquid there. So just what we want to, and see, this is what we don't want in our broth, uh, and we're getting rid of it. So let's take out those pieces of beef, just get them into some water or just rinse them under a tap, and then let's clean up that pot and start all over again. So clean beef bones, go back in the pot. And now for all the beautiful aromatics that makes a fur broth so special. Uh, if you have a look at the spices here, what I've got is some star anise, a cinnamon stick, and some whole cloves. So they go in. 
And then I've always got spring onions kicking around the bottom of my fridge. They just always seem to appear there. Um, so it doesn't matter if they're a little bit over the hill, don't worry about that. Uh, pop those in. And now our softened onion and ginger. And now some fresh water. Now bring this up to a gentle simmer and then let it cook for about two hours. And the secret here, my friends, is keep it gentle, keep it nice. Any kind of hard boiling here is gonna make our stock really cloudy. And I want a really nice, beautiful color, crystal clear. So just let it do its thing nicely. Okay, so this is smelling truly amazing, my friends. Oh, I just, you know, it's incredible how much of the fragrance of the spices and the aromatics you get. I mean, you know, the smell of a beautiful fur broth is truly a joy. Uh, now, I did sort of scoop off, used a ladle and scooped off some of that scummy stuff that rose up to the top just throughout the two hours of cooking. So this is what we're left with and let's keep going because I really need to eat some fur. <laughs> smell, I can tell you that. Now, I just like to get some of these big bits and pieces out of the way first, because I do want to strain this, but it makes less of a mess if you kind of get these bits out first. Now I am going to keep that bowl of chunky stuff because I'm going to use some of that beef a little later on. In the meantime, let's take a look at our broth. Strain that out. Hmm. And just look at that beautiful golden color. Oh. And so now we're in the final stages of making our perfect bowl of fur. Now I want to get this beautiful broth back into a clean pot and from now on it's all about the setup. So the important part of our broth still to come and that is the seasoning. So what I want to do is just try this and see where we're at. Mm. You know, that star anise fragrance is so beautiful and then you've got like the background beefiness and then all those other little aromatics in there. Mm. Oh, so good. Now, I do want to season with some fish sauce. And look, I find that you really need to aggressively season the broth itself because we're going to be adding noodles which are unseasoned, we're going to be adding more beef which is unseasoned. So you really want this broth to be the star of the show here. I want a little bit of sugar as well. And then a fairly decent amount of salt here. Okay, let's get that heating up. Mm, we're getting there. It's a little bit more salt for my liking. Oh, and it just has that beautiful fur magic, which, I mean, not like furs and furry animals, but you know what I mean. <laughs> The fur is amazing, that's what I'm trying to say. <laughs> Alright, so now let's get our meaty bits and pieces all ready. And because I use beef short rib, it means I've got a good opportunity here to use up some of this lovely slow braised beef. Now you won't always get good chunks of meat here, like so say for example if you're using mainly knuckle bones or marrow bones, uh, you won't get that. But if you've used some short rib, you will. And I am all about the fat and gristle, I have to say. It's not everyone's cup of tea, but it certainly is mine. And you can see because we've simmered that broth so slowly and gently, uh, we've still got like a nice pink tinge to the meat here and it's not bone dry is good. Now don't worry if you don't have any meat that you can salvage from your bones because we're also going to use some extra beef on top. So this is just a piece of round steak that I've had uh, in the freezer for about 15 minutes. Putting it in the freezer means that we can slice it really thin far easier than if it was just at room temperature. Now you could use eye fillet here as well. Um, I find the main thing you're going for uh, for this cut of beef is you don't want too much uh, fat or connective tissue. And I hardly ever say that because I am such a fat girl when it comes to beef. But uh, if you've got big hunks of fat running through 
this piece of beef, the hot soup won't be enough to kind of dissolve it and make it really yummy. So just go for one that, that is all beef and you want some really thin slices here. So if you pick that up, it should look like a stained glass window. You should be able to see the light. See the light. <laughs> you should be able to see the light through the beef. All right, so we are finally at the assembly stage, which means we are nearly there, my friends. We can nearly indulge in our beautiful, perfect bowl of fur. Uh, now, what I want you to do here is pretend that you're like Gordon Ramsay and get all really pedantic about the setup, because the setup is everything here. Uh, setup and timing. All right, so what I've got here are my noodles. I've had them soaking. These are some rice stick noodles, and I've soaked them in just some room temperature water uh, because I want them to soften up and for some of that starchiness to kind of escape out of the noodles. That way we're going to have a really clean, bouncy, snappy noodle in our bowl and not kind of like a soggy noodle. All right, and then we've got everything else here, our beef. Uh, I've got together a little seasoning plate here with some fish sauce and chili and lime and some Thai basil, bean shoots, spring onion, our sliced beef. We're ready to go. So grab yourself a handful. I like to do this bowl by bowl, just because I get the right amount of noodle and everything. So noodles go into my rapidly boiling water here. And you want to be quick about this. You want to keep the noodles moving. And literally, that was like, I don't know, 10 seconds. Pull them out, straight into your bowl. Bean shoots, grab a bunch of those into the water. Again, a few seconds only. Pull them out. I just want a little bit of thinly sliced onion here. And now you want a nice little bundle of some of this raised beef. For me, I like to go for all the little fatty bits, but that's just me. And some of those strips, wafer thin strips of steak. Throw some spring onion on top. And your broth should be bubbling away. I want lots of steam here. It should be like, it should be like facial time in your kitchen. <laughs> pour that on top, pour that over the beef, and you can see the beef changes color straight away. So it's cooking through there. And that is it, my friends. One legit bowl of Vietnamese pho right there. And look, if you, so when I am eating pho in Australia, uh, a lot of the time the restaurants will have hoisin sauce and sriracha sauce to add into this. That's great and I grew up kind of eating fur that way. But when I went to the north of Vietnam uh, in Hanoi, they would eat their fur completely unadorned, just like this with a little bit of fish sauce, some lime and the herbs, which I think if you're going to go to the trouble of, you know, making your fur soup from scratch, why not? really be able to taste it. Um, so I'm going to leave mine like this, but feel free to add poison and sriracha if you like. Now I'm going to add in a couple of chilies, Thai basil, a little squeeze of lime, a little extra fish sauce because, I don't know, here in Asia you always add a little bit of extra fish sauce, but we do in Thailand anyway. <laughs> and then mix. And now after waiting half a day, <laughs> let's make sure that it's all worthwhile, huh? Mm. You know, it looks like such a simple dish, but as we know, because we've just walked through the whole process, not so simple. It does take some time, but wow, is that worth it. Mm. And that soup broth, pure beefiness, saltiness, herbaceousness, all the things, all the nesses. <laughs> mm. It's really one of those beautiful pleasures in life, a good bowl of fur. I hope you guys love this one as much as I do. Mm. Yum. Mm. So good.